Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Derek, for the generous introduction. Uh, I wish I could be there today with you, um, but uh, Australia is a, is a long way. Perth is a long way. So I'm speaking from my home in Texas and I'm with you in, uh, in mind and heart. Um, today I'm going to be talking about travel, something that we all do a great deal of, but have probably put very little thought into the plumbing and behind the scene um, uh, complexities of travel and how we can optimize travel with blockchain. So today, from the outside, travel seems to be doing okay. There are um, 7.6 trillion dollars in market activity and more people are traveling every day. But from the inside, it's a centralized mess. In the US, for example, 92% of all non-direct hotel bookings go through two intermediaries, Expedia and Priceline. And in the airline space, it's even more daunting. Three companies have a combined market share of 99% globally. Think about that. Three companies have a combined market share of 99% globally of all uh, flight bookings. So this creates a huge problem internally. Um, these companies have very little incentive to innovate and they also prevent innovation from the outside, which they see as a potential threat, right, to, or comp uh, comp uh, competition. Um, and what, sort of our mantra with Winding Tree is, is a quote by Naval, uh, from, uh, the founder of AngelList, which says, without open data, we cannot have permissionless innovation. This means as long as there's somebody playing judge or lord in the middle, it's very hard to innovate, and that's why a lot of the innovation today comes from startups versus actual corporations. So this is what the current travel ecosystem looks like. You have a handful of suppliers on the one side, and then you have the point of sale and the traveler on the other side. In the middle, you have a handful of intermediaries charging fees of up to 25% of your travel money and using archaic technology, sometimes involving mainframe computers. Um, and like I said, the worst part is that they prevent innovation from the outside. Now, how can blockchain solve this? For the first time in history, a, a, a travel marketplace can be created with the ideal developer experience, no transaction fees, completely permissionless. Any startup can come in and innovate from the outside. And what is more is that blockchain allows us to do this with a guarantee that it's completely monopoly proof, meaning that the founders of Winding Tree could never turn around after they get enough market traction and say, hey, let's hike up the fees or let's start charging transaction fees and choosing who gets placed where. It's completely immutable. Once it's set in motion, it's like a living organism. And any startup can come in and innovate from the outside. In fact, a number of startups are already building onto Winding Tree without needing to ask for permission from us, like I said. So in the vacation rental space with micropayments for large uh, luxury villas, as an example, or in the corporate hotel space, uh, these guys, Smart Rate Hotel, they're uh, building a tool that will allow um, a corporate traveler to show up at the hotel, and check in, and the transfer of, of, of currency is actually made as you check in and sits in a smart contract until the person arrives there. The cool thing is that the cost saving is 20%. This is after they've taken their cut as well as the, the cost of transacting on the blockchain, you know, the payment for energy for transactions. Uh, Derek can explain more about that if you have questions. Um, and this isn't something that requires a huge commitment from travel companies. We have a very simple step-by-step -step process where a uh, travel supplier can treat us as one of many channels and list some of their inventory uh, on Winding Tree. You can see it here on the right-hand side, along with all their other channels. But once they reach critical mass, they can turn around and ask all their um, intermediaries to integrate through Winding Tree, giving them more uh, leverage and negotiations. They don't have to commit to price parity agreements, that sort of thing. Um, and they also get full access to their data, because currently intermediaries withhold and bottleneck data, which hurts the, the, the traveler experience because they, you're, you're giving up your data anyways, except for the intermediaries are using it instead of the travel provider who wants to improve the experience. This isn't theoretical. We already have a number of major corporate users who are paying to use the platform. They're not traditional investors who take control of the company in any way. They're actually paying users purchase tokens to use on the platform, which was huge for us because 
this is proof that um, one of the biggest arguments against the project at the beginning was how would you ever get corporations to purchase your decentralized tokens when they know that it's a completely decentralized market. But it's already been done. And in fact, we have uh, a press release coming out in about a week or so uh, from our latest major airline that's come on board from your part of the world. I can't say the exact company, but I'm sure you have some ideas and, uh, of who it might be. Uh, that'll be pretty exciting. Winding Tree is a nonprofit. So what, we don't take any transaction fees from the, the, the travel experience, from the distribution, or any of that. Um, instead, um, everybody's aligned around the same goal. And that is the increasing the value of the platform. So the travel suppliers want more points of sale. So they want to increase awareness and they want to um, bring their partners on board. The same thing with the points of sale, the, the, the OTAs, the um, travel apps. They want more suppliers because they want more inventory to pull from. Investors and founders, they want more value of the platform because it means that the more transactions that are taking place, the higher the valuation of those tokens are. Right? So everybody's around uh, uh, aligned around the same goal of increasing the value of the platform, which is different than traditional uh, marketplaces where um, what uh, a supplier might want might be different than what an uh, intermediary might want. Right? And we have a team that's, that's uh, very strong roots in the travel technology space. Over 10 years, two of uh, our co-founders have spent in, uh, in the travel tech space have gone through uh, Y Combinator, which is huge. And um, we also have a blockchain architect, um, one of the uh, most sought after developer uh, skills really today, um, who's been in the space for, for quite a few years. And our um, advisory board is actual travel, um, travel industry veterans. This is different than a lot of the um, ICOs and, and blockchain projects you see where the, the emphasis and the advisory board all consists of ICO guys, meaning very, uh, very likely that it's a pump and dump um, environment where they're, they're giving very high concessions to early investors, they're uh, attracting a certain type of, of people, it's, there isn't very much long-term um, potential. Winding Tree is a very long-term project. And we acknowledge that. That's why Winding Tree founders are actually on a four-year uh, vesting schedule, meaning that the founders will not receive their tokens until four years out. We ran a um, we ran a, a small, intentionally small round uh, earlier this year in uh, September that raised one and a half million dollars from over a thousand participants. This is important because the idea of ICOs was not to allow an easier way to raise funds with less accountability or something like that. It was actually about distributing power, about decentralizing. So our, our goal is to get as many people on board with supporting the project as possible. Um, so it's not just a few key stakeholders that own most of the project because that would lead back to centralization. So uh, sticking with that, we're gonna have a crowd sale in February where we're gonna raise $10 million or more. Uh, from the public and uh, hopefully you will uh, know enough about blockchain to get involved and, and participate in the project and if you have any kind of questions I'm happy to uh, to answer and um, hopefully to get a chance to go down there to Perth and, and meet you guys in person but otherwise shoot me an email at pedro at windingtree.com check out our website we have some chat rooms that you can join thank you so much for having me and I hope that this project gives you an idea of how blockchain could radically revolutionize an industry.